I decided that I'm going to be in charge of what happens to me moving forward. There's mm -hmm. always going to be an element of chaos that you can't account for, but you can at least point your compass in a direction and march that way. You're listening to the Christoph Lewis Podcast, a podcast where I have conversations with inspirational people. My name is Chris, but my family calls me Christoph. My goal is to have as many conversations as possible with people who have forged their own path by pursuing their dreams, making them a reality, all the while emitting positivity and sharing this knowledge with others. I seek these people out and share this information with you, proving to the world that you can do what makes you happy and do what you want for a living while being a good human being. We'll talk about careers, but we'll also cover any story that inspires. Let's do this while helping each other. Thanks for listening. I'm happy you're here. All right, my friends, it's the day. Today's the day. It is the day, the day of all days. It is the Christoph Lewis podcast, and this is guest number 100, conversation number 100, and I am so excited that you are here with me today. I cannot believe it. My guest today is the one and only Daniel Sharp. He's a comedian, and he was a former Marine, and he was in Iraq and Afghanistan as well, and he's the host of the Smoke Pit podcast. He's in a lot of crazy shit and a lot of fun shit, and I caught him right before he headed out to Area 51 to catch all that madness. I want us to take this time to say thank you so much for listening. This is all about helping each other out, finding yourself, pursuing what you want to do in life, knowing that there's going to be obstacles in life, knowing that you can get over those obstacles, help other people get over those obstacles, learn from each other, continue learning, just be relentless about wanting to have a growth mindset and help each other grow and get through this life. I appreciate it so very much that you take the time to listen to this and share it. Rate on iTunes, all that stuff. It means so much to me. I pour my heart and soul into this. It's about 150 60 episodes now so thank you so much for all your support and i really really can't thank you enough now that you can find this episode of the conversations the contemplations on christophlewis.com forward slash podcast you can find me on instagram at christoph lewis so without further ado welcome to the 100th guest of the christoph lewis podcast um, pleasure to be here man it's uh this is uh I'm at a loss for words. We're at 100 guests right now, and you're 100, 100th guest. It's so cool. Yeah, congratulations, man. That's a, that's an amazing feat. Yeah, thank you. It's uh, like I was saying when I started. I mean, my wife asked me before I did this. I was uh, I had no idea. I had no idea it was gonna go this far. I just wanted to do a podcast. Wanted to help myself. Wanted to help other people. And I had no idea where it was gonna go. So here we are. So pretty cool. And you are um, an Iraq and Afghan vet yourself. I've been over to uh, the Afghanistan parts a little bit myself, so and uh, you're also a podcast host as well, which I thought was pretty cool. So um, when I reached out to you, I saw all this and I was like, "This guy's gonna be great because you you, po you podcast host as well, and and you're a vet, and I wanted to be very special and to be another vet with me." So thank you. Well, that's a that's a lot of pressure. Um, <laughs> I try to save all my funny and all my social interaction yeah. for the one hour a week that we record. Yeah, and I kind of retreat back to my cave. Please. And I yeah, just play uh, NBA 2K by yeah. myself and order DoorDash. <laughs> that is awesome. Well, on the same side over here, like I've literally uh, never had a beer on the show and I, I cracked a beer. I'm not going to even, I'm not going to lie and tell you what it is. So I'm not going to tell you uh, anything about it, but it's a little celebratory beer today. So just really excited, man. Um, I want to know more about like, you know, I want to kind of go off key a little bit. Like I was saying, typically I, I follow to kind of like an outline a little bit talking about career transitions and other stuff, but I want to learn a little bit more about you, man. And, and, and why, and how are you doing all the things that you're doing, what you're doing now? Like, how did you get into podcasting? I kind of want to start in that. Well, it, um, it, it kind of went from the idea that I was creating a lot of content online and I wasn't able to, uh, express everything that I wanted to because like in a meme or like a video skit or something like yeah. that you only have a, a finite amount of time to be able to uh, express your intent and accomplish a purpose yeah you know the you know the one of the rules of comedy is that you're trying to accomplish something whether that is uh, be unexpected surprise your audience um, make commentary on something in a humorous way but you're trying to accomplish a mission and uh, I just remembered that one of the best parts of being in the military was uh, just sitting around with your buddies, like whether you're on your packs <laughs> waiting for the seven tons to show up or, you know, if you're in the smoke pit and then we just want to kind of recreate that atmosphere. Yeah. That's a great answer. And that's, 
Totally right. Like I know when I was on deployments, like there's some of those days that just absolutely drag and you're waiting for shit to go down and you're just bullshitting with people or after we'd go out for a night and we'd come back and I'd be thankful to be back and you're just like just bullshitting and having a good time. And I think that's when some of the fun stuff comes out. So it's funny that you named it the smoke pit. Totally makes sense now. <laughs> yeah. We've actually seen like six other smoke pit podcasts pop up after ours. Those and... motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's all good. The, um, it, it, it's a shared experience. You know, I just feel that, you know, we do it a little bit better than some other people. And my old uh, regiment that uh, my first unit, when I got to the Marine Corps, their uh, smoke pit is actually listed on Google maps. Uh, and people leave like humorous reviews okay. and, and there was a big confusion whether or not it, it was an actual uh, bar and grill um, <laughs> or it was just, you know, gazebo that yeah. uh, a bunch of Marines, uh, you know, were at. And so it's just kind of like, just the culture that mm-hmm. that the military brings is that you know the the idea of taking an inanimate object but then also making it a source of humor mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you guys are like the og you know like you're, you're the you're the original so i mean you, you have to have your own flavor that nobody can replicate yeah it's a it's, it's a good time we try to keep it a little bit faster pace a, a lot of banter a lot of roasting uh stories just crazy enough that they might be real and uh, that's, that's kind of the essence that we wanted to capture. And cause there's a lot of guys who were in, uh, BFE, Iowa or Montana or you know, Everglades. And, you know, they're not near a large mm-hmm. military community. They don't mm-hmm. have mm-hmm. the, the silkies hikes or, mm-hmm. you know, the, uh, you know, the, the veteran gatherings like Burbis or stuff like that, where they can go and be around hundreds and thousands of other veterans. Like the only vet that they have is their crazy uncle, you know, <laughs> who is, you know, still sleeps under the porch after Nam. Yeah. Yeah, that's some scary shit, though. How did you get into, like, the comedy aspect of all of this? Like, what drove you from that? Like, has that always been kind of your personality, I'm guessing? Or, like, has that? when did you get into that? Yeah, the um, I, th- I think that any person who is in comedy, they have some deep-seated pain or sure. trauma yeah. that they're they're trying to mask to the world. And uh, it also started at uh, a young age, and it was just kind of a coping mechanism. And just to be able to, to, to take that and... Uh, bundle it up and then put it in a way that's relatable to other people. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of the goal. What do you, what do you do mostly right now? Are you just a comedian? <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, uh, well, I own a small business okay. that I'm in the process of selling. Uh, I ran it for about three years. The idea was to have a company that did blue collar manual labor, but only hired veterans okay. and their family members. So if that veteran themselves, they weren't able to uh, work, you know, to like do the manual labor, then I try to find some other aspects where mm-hmm. they were doing email marketing campaigns for me, or if they could walk the p- handing out flyers or door hangers. Yeah. And so in three years, I was able to, to hire about 30 veterans, wow. um, help them transition to their next point because you get out of the military and it's just like, well, I didn't really plan for this because, you know, most people on t- steps and taps are there within 30 days of getting out, which mm-hmm. is horrid. Mm-hmm. And so they, you know, they didn't realize that uh, an application took as long as it did or admission to school, or they'd have to wait a month or two to get a boat space in a, in a, mm-hmm. in a school. So they can't exactly go to, you know, the hardware store and be like, Oh, I need a job for four months or I need a job for six weeks. And if they're in the process of working some other other aspect like they need flexible employment and that's that's what i offered yeah. uh, to be able to hire these guys so they could transition into the next aspect of their life because sometimes you know making 40 50 bucks in the day is the difference between you know buying groceries for the week for your family sure yeah and sometimes people's success or failure can really just you know just hang on a couple hundred dollars whether yeah. they're able to give themselves the opportunity to leap for their dreams or if they have to buckle down to that, you know, retail job or that gas station job, mm-hmm. because with their family, you know, you're a father, uh, you understand priorities. It's just like, sometimes you just have to make a call, like do my dreams matter or do feeding my family ma- matters. Yeah. And th- so this, this job, uh, th- this, this business was basically to be a little bit of a, a bridgeway. And I found another veteran who is uh, going to be a good shepherd of it and he's going to keep it running. And then I'm going to go into social media full time, man. That is awesome. That's, uh, I, I love the, the transitioning things. Obviously that's what I focus on. I'm huge about like create your career. And to me, like that was one of the craziest things I, when I first got in the military again, like with this podcast episode, I had no idea how long podcast episodes were going to go. I had no idea yep. 
how long I was going to stay in the military. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Like I was at a point in my life when I just needed some structure and the military gave me that. And then like when you leave that structure, it's freaking scary, you know? So I, I felt that in myself and I thought I was a pretty organized person and I was still pretty intimidated by this transition out of the military. So I was like, if I'm feeling this and then I started getting into leadership positions and I started seeing people get out and that didn't really have a plan. So I knew that if I'm experiencing it and I'm seeing other people experiencing it, then I need to go out there and I need to have these kind of conversations like we're having and try to educate people and at least maybe get them ready earlier and help them understand that there are like other programs out here too, like the stuff that you're doing. Yeah. And it, uh, it, it kind of came into the decision where I had to ask myself, what did I want my future to look like? When you join the military, it's kind of a... Um, a water slide where you get in yeah. and the unit you get sent to, sometimes you're, the job that you get, the base you get stationed, even down to the squad you get put in is so randomized yeah. that, you know, if you think about like the alternate universe, Rick and Morty kind of uh, <laughs> parallel timeline, uh, spider verse kind of thing, however you want to wrap your head around it. But, you know, if I had walked into the recruiter's office a day earlier or a day later, or if somebody hadn't, you know, yeah. broken ankle or if, you know, somebody hadn't been killed in that theater and, you know, it trickles down to where does this one piece of meat, this one human being end up in the Plinko board, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's like, uh, I, th there would have been you know, thousands of different, you know, if not millions of different experiences I could have had in the military. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I could have joined any of the branches. I could have joined the French foreign legion. You know, I could have got out after my first enlistment. I could have left, moved you know, the, the career planner could have sent me anywhere, but just somehow this happened to be my life and my existence. And I didn't really have much control of that. And then, so getting out of the military, I decided that I'm going to be in charge of what happens to me moving forward. There's mm -hmm. always going to be an element of chaos that you can't account for, but you can at least point your compass in a direction and march that way. Yeah. That's, <laughs> I had a similar, uh, so I was an electronics technician and in the Navy, as electronic technicians, there's electronic technicians, there's fire control man. And above that, it's like this field of AECF or advanced control. I don't advanced electronics computer field. Essentially what it means is that some random entity picks, you're going to be an ET or you're going to be an FC. And I always wanted to be the FC. And by some grace of God, I was an ET and that actually allowed for me to go serve in Naval Special Warfare. FCs can't do that. So that's like yeah. nothing that totally resonates with me because that's nothing I decided. There was some stroke of, of luck. And then I had an insanely fun career, a challenging career. And I was able to do the things now and set myself up for success post-military because of those experiences, all based on some number that I have no idea about. And somebody <laughs> is like, you should be an ET because we need some ETs like you're saying. But it's cool to say or hear you say that you've transitioned in this sense of saying, I'm in charge. You know, like I, I want to be able to run what's going on now. Yeah, because in the military, they always tell you to uh, shape the battlefield to your will. Mm -hmm. You know, if uh, if you're not at an advantage against your enemy, then you fail to plan. Mm -hmm. And I really took that to heart. And I was like, you know, this life is simple. If, you know, if you're a good person and you can pay your bills, you can pretty much do whatever you want. And especially with, you know, this country being as, uh, as beautifully flawed as it is, yeah, you can yeah. take advantage of that. And so between the, you know, the, the disability and the, the business and being able to hire a manager, like I've, I've been able to travel and go to all these veteran nice. nonprofit events and um, just do all these amazing things that I never would have expected as a, as a E3. Yeah. You know, when, when you think about that, like somebody shows you where tells you where to be, what to wear, what to do, how to show up, but they still want you to take initiative somehow. And <laughs> you know, it's like, it's so structured. And then it's like, uh, a rescue animal being released into the wild and like, yeah, sure. I'm supposed to know how to be a good penguin, but I don't know what the ocean looks like. And I said, all right, well, I'm going to do my research. I am going to prepare myself just like I would have before a mission. Yeah. And I found that there was a, a nice little niche that I could exploit and to have a comfortable life. That's awesome though. But you did your due diligence. It sounds like you really like looked into some things and you made a life that you wanted to live. And like you said, do whatever you want and be able to go out there and just, own it, be in charge. But I think it's awesome that like we live in a time, like you said, and we live in a country where you can do that. You do have those opportunities. Sure. It has its flaws, but it has so many pros as well. Like you're able to do this. We're able to have this conversation. You're able to go and be like, I want to go to social media full time. Like 
that's insane to me that you can do that. And you're obviously good at it. And I think it's incredible that you're able to do something that you love like that. And then furthermore, do all the things that you said and help people and educate people at the same time. Yeah. Cause what I figured is that I didn't expect to make it past 18. <laughs> and so everything now is just borrowed time. And there was an episode that you uh, talked about tithing and I'm not a very rich man and the money that I do have, I spent on women and food. And uh, so I figured the most precious quantity I have in this world is time. And so if I could donate at least 10% of my time every day uh, or every week to helping other human beings, particularly veterans, then that, uh, that was my way of earning my rent here on this planet. I love that. I really love that. It's uh, something I need to do more of. Absolutely. I need to, I need to give back more and I guess I do it or try to do it as best as I can through this podcast. I don't necessarily do it like monetarily, but I think, I don't think <laughs> I know that if I'm not with my family, like I was telling you before we record, if I'm not with my family or if I'm not on my day job, because I still got to work, like yeah. it's, it's podcast things. It's doing things like this and I do it, you know, it, it costs lots of money to do. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, the, the equipment, the editing, yeah. the sanity, the time, uh, man, your time, you know, the random two star review that makes no sense. Oh. You know, pull your hair out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get me started. I'm just like focusing <laughs> in on it. My mom, my, my wife's like, you're crazy. That was, might've been a Freudian slip right there. But, um, my, my, <laughs> wa- my wife is like, um, you need to stop freaking out about that kind of stuff right there. And, uh, it, yeah. you know, when you put your heart and your soul into things like that, like even the tiniest little, somebody's probably just going out there to intentionally interject themselves and be a dick. You know, it's like, they probably don't think it's two stars or one star. They just like, yeah. this is funny. <laughs> like, I was thinking about planning a, a trip out to Easter Island and I was looking at it and I noticed that there was uh, reviews on it on Google. So I said, well, this should be fun. <laughs> and there are a plethora of one star reviews saying that uh, <laughs> no Easter bunny was in sight. And so you take something like Easter Island where yeah. it's a, you know, a marvel of, uh, you know, the human will to be able to create those pieces of art and the statues and out in the middle of nowhere and just the chance that we happen to find the island and study it. And then, you know, you have some jerk off from New Jersey or wherever. <laughs> Definitely New I'm Jersey. Kidding. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I, I heard you say you were from there. I'm from Florida, so I don't have much room to speak. But uh, you know, some, some jerk is, you know, leaving it a one star review and it's like, really like that's, that, that's the best thing you could have done with your time. You know, that, that's yes. how you feel about life. Okay. The, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was born in Jersey, moved to Colorado. Now here I am in Virginia and I'm in DC, like I was telling you, and I don't really like it. So I cannot wait to get back down to Virginia beach. I just did a live this week and I released to the world that, uh, talking about like doing whatever you want. This is the first job, first major job, first job that I had outside the military. Um, I spent a long time trying to get this job and I just quit it. And we're moving back down there to do things that I'd rather do and to be near family. So that totally resonates with me being able to go after what you want. Brother, man, that's like spending months and months trying to get that one girl from S1's attention, you know, cause she's hot and everybody wants her. And then you finally get on a date with her and you're like, man, like this is not what it was cracked <laughs> up to be. Yeah, man. Such is and life sometimes, though. God. It's like that. At the, um, Leonard Nimoy said, having is not such a pleasing thing as wanting. It's highly illogical, but often true. So I liken that to the idea of um, getting, you know, getting a Christmas present. You know, you spent months asking your mom and dad for it. And you finally get it. You play with it for 20 minutes. And then it's like, all right, I'm going to go back to beating up my brother or my <laughs> sister, you know. And you spend so much time fixated on the idea of something rather than the actual Mm -hmm. prospect. And so I I try to tell people who ask me for advice, I was like, look, man, getting out of the military isn't uh, such a holy grail as you think it is. Like, you shouldn't be afraid of it. By no Mm -hmm. means am I saying you should stay in the military, but look before you leap. You know, the military is a, a, a safe place because you get paid every 1st and 15th. As long as you don't do anything against the UCMJ, which isn't terribly hard, you're going to be fine yeah. and you're going to have steady employment and benefits for you and yours for years. But then people get this idea that being out of the military is so magical and like, no, it's rough out here. You know, if you don't pay your bills, you get evicted. You know, if you don't pay taxes, you know, the government comes after you, you know, you, don't, you may not have the same community, you know, the, the nostalgia of being with your buddies, but at the same time, that's only if you don't prepare and if you don't work hard. Yeah. So yeah. 
if you do those things, it can be a wonderful experience. Yeah. So it's not just enough to get out of the military, but to be able to angle yourself at a certain trajectory that you will be successful. Mm. That's what that's what I encourage people to do, because, you know, they, they say the grass is always greener on the other side. And it's the same thing with that. Like, yes, your wildest dreams are on the other side, whether you want to stay in and continue to serve or get out. But either way, you have to plan and you have to have realistic expectations. Yeah. Planning is huge. I've always been like that. Like I like from the surface, like from the outside, if you're looking in on my life, you'd be like, damn, that dude risks a lot of shit all the time. Like how could he quit that job? How could he leave the Navy? Like he was doing so well or whatever. And from the inside, I'm like, I've done all this preparation. I've, I've for months, for years, like I got out in 18. I started preparing for it in December of 15. You know what I'm saying? Like, it looks like I've just, it's like that overnight success spiel that you, spiel that you always see. Like, it looks like it's overnight, but I've been working for a long time for, and that preparation is absolutely priceless. And then I just, I'm not leaving anything to chance because I prepare so much. And it's like, it's kind of sad to me when you, you know, we were kind of describing like the grass is greener and that whole preparation, like with the job thing, like I prepared for the job longer than I've actually worked at that job. And it's insane to me, but, and then like leaving the military is the similar feeling as leaving this job. Like you realize that anything's really possible. If you do prepare, then you don't dig yourself into this shitty hole where you can't do all those things you describe, like pay your taxes, pay your bills and do all those things. But the possibilities are actually freaking endless. And that's like one of the things, one of the points I try to drive home in this podcast is, yeah, you can do anything you want, but you can't just be a jackass and get out and just think it's going to be easy because like you leave, like you described the military, you have the safety net. Not only are you getting paid on the first and the 15th, but you have all these benefits. Like it's pretty cush and it's really hard to get kicked out, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like people don't, don't realize how expensive ammunition really is. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I was in the infantry and so we shot quite often and you know, being able to like, I, I went to the range and I was like, Oh, I probably would shoot like 500 rounds today. Like that's kind of a light day on the range for us, you know? And then I was like, Oh, 500 rounds of uh two, two, three. And they're like, all right, that's going to be one kidney, please. Yes. And I was just like, Whoa, like I, all right. So with this amount of money, I could just buy my own press or I need to buy on bulk yes. like online or something, yeah. but that's what I started, it was yeah. a bit of a wake up call. Yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> Yeah, people don't realize all the benefits that go into it, but that's not to discourage anybody because Absolutely not. you you will face obstacles no matter what you do. And the, the the true mark of somebody is how they use those obstacles to better themselves in the future. There are people who will have things that happen to them and they refuse to either take accountability or to plan uh, for foreseeable obstacles and and then they, they, their cards will fall where they may. But if you overcome an obstacle, you have, you have to have realistic expectations moving forward. And you have to tell yourself, like, this isn't going to be the only bump in the road. Yeah. And there are tons of other people who are working harder, if not just as hard as you are, for the same goals. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what makes me different? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going to set me apart? You know, there's in my realm and in, in the comedy where I've, you know, I've, I've managed to accrue a decent following in the veteran community where it's like, all right, well, what sets me apart? And and so, you know, I have to be honest with myself and evaluate what my strengths and my weaknesses are and then apply that to the mission that I'm trying to accomplish. And so a lot of people, like you said, everybody just thinks that there's somebody that's going to offer them a cush six figure job yeah. somewhere, you know, like, oh, well, I, you know, I have all these this leadership experience, buddy. So does everybody else. Yeah. You know, we've, you know, we have like 400,000 uh, OIFOE vets getting out of the military every year. Like what, what makes you different? Yeah. And then that's going to happen. That's going to do one of two things to someone that's either going to scare them mm -hmm. because they're immediately realizing how large the arena is, how many other competitors there are, or it's going to excite them. It's going to say, it's going to give them that, that taste for blood and adrenaline in their mouth and be like, you know what? I can't compete for this. Like I want this. I'm hungry for it. I want to succeed. And so you typically have those two types of people. You have the um, adventurous and trepidatious. So you have to decide, am I shy or am I bold? Am I the type of person that needs to be pushed forward or held back? Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with either of that. Like even in Marine Corps doctrine, it says there's a difference between a logistics leader and a tactical leader. And like we need both. Yeah. But being able to be honest with yourself, not everybody's a long ball hitter. Not everybody's a designated hitter. Not everybody, you know, is the quarterback or the starting. Like, so you just have to be honest with yourself. 
set those realistic expectations and do the research to find out where you succeed and then be successful. Yeah. Doing the research and like, where are you succeeding? You just said, so like, I'm going to take it a different, different direction, but like being honest with yourself is what I really liked, but I want to go back into the, some of the struggles that you had. Some of you talked about obstacles. I mean, despite everything you just said, are there any obstacles that like stuck out specifically with you? Yeah. Um, investing in the wrong people mm. can be an obstacle. Mm. Okay. Um, you, you want to surround yourself with people who are motivated, like-minded, uh, trustworthy and you know all those guys who got you know and gals who got kicked out for drug use or you know for stealing or whatever violation like they're still floating out there mm -hmm. and they still have the pictures on their social media of them in uniform and you know even if they just got away with stuff like there are going to be so many people out there they're going to see your light and they're drawn to it like a moth mm -hmm. and all they're going to want to do is suck your energy and uh, s siphon off your success and so making sure that you don't get taken advantage of, because a lot of people I've met in the military are very kind and very generous. They yeah. would, you know, you know, they would give somebody their, you know, their last cigarette or their last pair of clean socks, you know, the shirt off their back or whatever the case is. And unfortunately there are people out there who take advantage of that. Yeah. And so it's good to be kind. I will, I will never change myself, you know, who I am, regardless of how many times I've been taken advantage of, but you do have to protect yourself because if you're giving your time or your resources mm -hmm. or your money to people who don't deserve it, that's time, energy, you know, money that you could have dedicated to your family or yeah. to your future or yeah. to people who do deserve it. Yeah. Ventures that will prosper you versus things that will make you stumble. Yeah. That's great advice. I've found just with this podcast that I've struggled with that as a lot, because like I said, I, I expend a lot of my time, a lot of my energy. I could be with my family right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah. and then sometimes like we talk about those two star ratings or something. And then I'm like all upset about that. I'm expending my time on this wrong energy. And then like, maybe I get shitty with them and like, what the hell did they do? They didn't do anything. And I'm over here doing this pro bono. So you have to be really careful about like where yeah. you're doing that as well. It's, it's scary, man. It's like, you have to find this, I don't know. I mean, I just released an episode about balance and I used to always say like, you have to find this balance, but yep. I, it turns out that I don't really have balance. Like I was talking in an episode, like my mom was like, you have to find balance. And it all happened like, because I got drunk when I was 14 years old and I was all out of whack and I was all out of balance. And it turns out yeah. that I had this like negative balance for these things in my life for doing like crazy dumb shit. And now I've just turned it around and I'm like out of balance still, but like I've teetered to the other side and I'm like, going hard on the podcast and going hard with trying to help other people and be a better father and a better husband. So yeah, man, be the people that you're around with is, is some of the best advice I could possibly ever give somebody because sometimes I'm not strong enough to do all these things we're talking about. And it's that person, it's my wife, it's my father, it's my mother, it's my friend. That's like, man, you can do it. You know, you can get through this shit and don't listen to all that noise. And that's what helps me. Yeah. You think about the, um, the, the people that we have in the military that you would consider like the, the best of the best or the elite, right? Yeah. Uh, none of them do it by themselves. Yeah. You know, uh, every squad, you know, has multiple people in it. And then in addition to that, there was the people who provide them intelligence or ISR or, you know, the, the medevac personnel on standby or there's fire support people on standby. And then, you know, you could go 20 layers into yeah, it. Yeah. And it's like nobody can accomplish anything of significance entirely by themselves whether it's to a large degree or to a small degree it's good to have a solid support network yeah it's it's priceless man it's going to help you out so much it's going to help you out so much so i, I would think as a comedian you got to stay on the uppity ups how do you stay like when it comes to education about like how you stay on top of your game as you, i mean you're going into social media like that's a dangerous realm so like when it comes to yeah. education like how do you stay on top man well, I, uh, I try to interact with my followers as much as possible. And if they recommend a book or a podcast or whatever the case, I, I try to make time for that to say connected because especially yeah. the further removed I get away from, you know, the, the military, the longer I get out, the more things are going to change. Mm -hmm. And so my philosophy right now is I just, um, I just found a college girl that I could date and she could keep me hip to all the lingo and the memes and all the <laughs> happenings and stuff and, you know, keep me young. <laughs> Siphoned <laughs> but, information from her. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, on a top of that, I, I think one of the things that the Marine Corps does the best is the Commandant's reading list. There are some amazing, uh, uh, highly rated um, books on there with multiple awards and stuff. And you figure that, you know, there's all the jokes and stuff like that, but there are some really cerebral books in there. Mm-hmm. Um, because at, at the end of the day, like, uh, you know, we do a very good job of pushing small unit leadership. Like I was an E3 and I was leading combat patrols on my second deployment as a 21 year old. Yeah. That's, wow. that's, ex- that, you know, that, that was not uh, that uncommon back in 2005 and 2007 during the surge. It was, uh, you know, the whole reason there's a terminal Lance uh, franchise is that because infantry Marines would commonly get out as an E3. And so it's not uncommon for, for that to have happened. And so mm-hmm. to be that young and to be placed in such a position where other people's lives are in your hands, um, I was, n- you'll never be prepared enough for what you want to do. Never. You just have to take the leap. But the bit of preparation that I did had came from my senior leadership saying, hey, you should read this book. You should listen to this. You should watch that movie. You should talk to this person and, and gain their experience. So thinking that you have all the answers is foolhardy yeah. being humble enough to acknowledge the fact that you can learn something from every person you interact with. And, um, you know, there's an old saying in the good book that if you rebuke a fool, he will hate you. But if you rebuke or teach a wise man, he will love you for it because now he is wiser still. And so that is really one of the ways that you can judge somebody's character. If they're wrong and in a very polite and tactful way, you inform them that they're wrong. Mm. They're even going to be like, Oh snap. Thank you for not, you know, Thank you for telling me. Now I'm not wrong anymore. Now I'm not yeah. going to look like an asshole. Yeah. But if they immediately like jump down your throat, it's like, okay, that's the kind of person that they are, that they're always right. They, yeah. they don't want to be yeah. correct. They just want to be right. And that's the difference, you know? It's a huge so, difference. Yeah, just reaching out to other people and uh, to do exactly what I'm describing, uh, this term that was coined, uh, stand on the shoulders of giants. There are people out there who know, you know, they've forgotten more about leadership or business or marketing than you will ever know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they've written books, they've done podcasts. Uh, there's a wealth of information out there. Yeah. And all you have to do is take the spaceship of a cell phone that you have in your hand and yeah. just click off a of Pornhub for five minutes <laughs> just and learn five something. Minutes. Just five minutes. But you got to know where to click, too. You know what I'm saying? With all that <laughs> information, you got to know where to click. Sometimes yeah. Pornhub makes it easier for you. But, like, when you get outside yeah. of that that world, it's kind of hard, like, that's the issue. Like there's all this good information out there, but how do I siphon that issue, that information? Yeah. Uh, like the link comes up and it's like professor teaches student a lesson. I'm like, well, that seems like <laughs> worth my time. I learned something from that. <laughs> yeah, man, that's so true. Um, but last thing I wanted to say is like, it is crazy. 21 year old leading that kind of situation is insane. And that like, that changes you. And I know me personally, I wasn't in that kind of position, but I was in similar positions and it forced me to just grow the fuck up. Like I went from that selfish, crazy teenager to grow the fuck up because you have to, and other people's lives depend on you. Like you were saying like 20 layers deep of all these people that depend on each other. And that's the damn truth. So when I, when you throw me into that layer, like, like you said, there's two ways you're going to go for most things. Um, but for me and for you, it was like, people's lives depend on me and I have to make this happen. And you have, and then like taking advice of people that have done it before and stand on the shoulders of giants is a great, great way to say that, man. I absolutely love that. And I wish it didn't have to come to an end already. Uh, I wish we could bullshit for another 30 or 60 minutes, but I've, I've really appreciate it. You got to head off to sounds like area 51 you're talking about tonight, huh? Yep. I'm um, about to head to the airport. I'm going to hop on a flight out to Las Vegas and then I'm going to head out to area 51 and kind of stand at a, a 90 degree offset Yes, please. and watch, watch the nerds and the other nerds, the air force, uh, go at it. <laughs> Bad. That's a, uh, I'm, I'm going to be eagerly anticipating the results of that. See, my big fear is that some 19 year old air, uh, air force kid is going to get nervous and he's yeah. going to crack off a negligent discharge. and He's going to skip a rock and hit me in the testicle. Well, you should probably wear a cup. Well, I mean, if you have any ballistic cups, like <laughs> we can make that. We have the technology and the steady <laughs> There's hands. No time, man. There's, There's no time. No time. 
Well, it's I don't know. You can make the time for things that guard your uh, your uh, DSM, so you'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, Dan, I I can't I can't thank you enough. A um, hundred episodes. Well, we're well over a hundred episodes, but a hundred guests is uh, massive, and for you to be a part of this, like I said means a lot the time out of your day but i would love for everybody to know how they can find you if they don't know how to do that so where can they do that well um that space right between being awake and right before falling asleep that's where you can find me mm, mm. just gently kiss you on the forehead like tinkerbell that's okay i like that <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, you can check us out online at uh, pop smoke that's kind of the uh the handle for everything we have a facebook page snapchat twitter uh, pop smoke official on instagram uh also the smoke pit podcast you can find us on itunes and spotify all right all right dan thanks so much i really appreciate it and safe travels and uh let me know if you see any aliens or some crazy shit pop off and good luck to you and your nuts <laughs> <laughs> thanks brother man see ya <laughs>